I feel as though I've been waiting absolutely ages for this, Nokia's new N97. Their first N-series phone with a large touchscreen and a slide-out QWERTY keyboard. So, has it been worth the wait? Well, the touch bit, I have to say, is slightly disappointing. This isn't a touch screen you're going to touch for the sheer pleasure of using it like an iPhone's. It's nothing like as good. However, it does work when you get used to giving it a good strong shove. And uh, visually, it is actually a good screen. It's 16 by 9, it's 3.5 inches across, and 640 by 360 pixels. The keyboard isn't that great either. Maybe because of the shortcomings of the touch screen, Nokia have chosen to include a control pad alongside it here, with the result that the keyboard's been squashed up a bit, the keys are rather small, and the space bar's been shuffled off down there and compressed rather. The result of all this is that typing is really rather slow. It is a bit quicker to type on than uh, an iPhone's touchscreen keyboard, but it's slower than the keyboards on the uh, E75 or even the touchscreen keyboard on Nokia's 5800. I think they'd have been better to put that control pad up there and it would allow the full width of the phone to be occupied by the keyboard. The actual slider mechanism, though, is very elegant, and when you put the uh, phone down on a table, the screen's tilted to face you, which is handy. And the finish is quite good, too, although probably it's not quite as robust as uh, the feel you get with some of Nokia's business phones. They've made great strides, though, with the touchscreen version of the Series 60 interface. It's much less confused than the first version they bought out on the 5800. There's this button down here, which enables you to switch between a conventional Series 60 view and a sort of content interface. You can actually customise this one quite a bit. You can quickly add or delete contacts, widgets and applications. Some of the widgets have more comprehensive applications behind them, like this Amazon one which comes up with sort of headline offers on this screen, and if you tap it, you can go to a fuller shop front behind it. And it's always online, whether you're connected by Wi-Fi or 3G other applications link in with the phone's excellent GPS and electronic compass. This AccuWeather one, for example, continually knows where you are and updates itself with weather information accordingly. Though obviously you've got to watch out for your data plan if it's not unlimited or when you're abroad. Battery life is pretty good though. I found I could get two days on a charge, which is very good indeed for a phone of this type. And it is absolutely brimming with features. You've got 32 gigabytes of internal memory. You can extend that by a further 16 gigabytes merely by slipping in a memory card in the memory card slot. And it's got a, a good camera, five megapixels with autofocus and video, including widescreen video. Although it is a shame that the flash is just an LED one, not a proper Xenon flash. But there's an excellent music player with a three and a half millimeter headphone socket and an FM radio with RDS. There's good email support, including Nokia's own messaging, which is great. However, there are a few things missing from the specification. I find it surprising in a phone as expensive as this that Nokia only bundles a version of Quick Office that allows you to read documents rather than create and edit them as well. And also, as strangely always on Nokia N series phones, there isn't a stopwatch. Also, there was no sign of a BBC iPlayer application on the phone I was trying, nor Nokia's excellent comes with music feature. Still, the N97 makes a good job of browsing Nokia's developing Ovi store, where you can get applications and music and stuff. Although the Ovi store is still very much a work in progress, it's a long way to go before it can rival Apple's Apps Store and iTunes. So, was the N97 worth the wait? Well, I think yes, actually. It would be easy to harp on about its negative characteristics, the fact the touchscreen isn't quite as good as it could be, the fact the keyboard's not quite as good as it could be the fact it hasn't got a proper Xenon flash. It'd be easy to go on about the fact that it's so expensive and the fact that our early production model had quite a number of bugs in it. But assuming they get those fixed, I think you've got to overlook those negatives because taken as a whole, it has a very comprehensive range of features and is probably one of the best phones you can buy at the moment. Mm -hmm.